I'm, I'm prejudiced, obviously, since I flew it, but I, I think it's probably one of the greatest airplanes ever built. It's the world's fastest. It holds all the speed records. It goes higher than any other airplane in the world. It flew across the entire United States in 64 minutes. The SR-71 was developed for a need, and that need arose when Gary Powers got shot down in the U-2. Secret reconnaissance of Russia by high-flying American U-2 jets ended when one was down deep in Soviet territory. The United States, they were looking for an airplane that would go higher and faster than the U-2 and be totally invulnerable to enemy defenses. If you add up the number of people who have flown it on operational reconnaissance missions only, you'll come up with 86 pilots total. This mission is classified secret. The day before the mission, the primary crew, which is a pilot and a navigator, would meet at the mission planning. The mission planners would have all your computer flight plans laid out on a table, and for the next two, three hours, you would go through the entire route of flight. If we uh, had MiGs come up, if we had SAMs fired at us, if we had an engine flame out, what we would do along the entire route of flight. Any plane that goes above 50,000 feet, you have to be in a pressure suit. The higher you go in altitude, the lower the boiling point becomes of fluids. Your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and your ears, where there's any kind of moisture whatsoever, that'll be the first place to start boiling real rapidly. So that is why we wear a pressure suit. It saves your life. When the cockpits are all set up and ready for you to go, they give you a thumbs up, you walk up the steps, crawl into the seat, and then from then on, you let the physiological support people who do our pressure suits, they make all the matings to the ejection seat. Your life is in their hands because with the pressure suit on, you cannot see any of these connections whatsoever. An average mission was probably three and a half to four hours. Each engine puts out thrust. 34,000 pounds, so you have a total of 68,000 pounds of thrust coming out both engines. Those pointy things in front of each engine, those are called the spikes. Those spikes retract back into the inlet the faster and faster you go. And what it's doing is capturing the shock wave right at the very pointy tip of it that reaccelerates it at the back. When you're cruising at Mach 3.2, those engines are putting out 20% of the thrust. The inlets are putting out the other 80% of the thrust. The altitude we flew at was anywhere between 70 to 85,000 feet. If you look out one window to the front cockpit to the other side, you can see a very definitive curvature of the Earth, very bright in the day and very dark at night. From about 45 degrees above the horizon, the stars are out in the daytime. And one of the sensors we had was an optical camera which we called our technical objective cameras. They could get down to a resolution from 80,000 feet to about three to four inches resolution. We went up to Murmansk and Vladivostok. When we imaged them, they could tell exactly what nuclear subs were there, where the carriers were at, at each of the ports all the time. This airplane is on the leading edge of stealth technology. Uh, the airplane is very smooth underneath. There's no edges or jagged places to get a good radar return from. Black tends to absorb radar rather than bounce it. The paint has very minute particles of iron inside of it, and that tends to absorb and suck up the radar rather than attenuate it back down to the ground. We fly the airplane. Now I park the airplane. I shut down the engines. I go to debriefing. Now our intel folks, they work all through the night getting this image processed and get the intelligence out to the right folks. So there's a lot of people before you fly it, a lot of people working while you're flying it, and then a lot of people after you fly it. There was a lot of politics in retiring the SR. Satellites were getting better. Their photography as well as radar imaging was getting better. The leadership of the Air Force then was not very enamored with an airplane that didn't carry bombs or missiles or guns, and that's why the SR retired. It's sad to see the SRs on the ground uh, when I know they could still be flying and doing a job. 
There's not many countries today that we couldn't still fly over you know, with unimpeded. But to bring back all those sole source vendors for the special fuel, the special oil, the special hydraulic fluid, the tires, you can't find those vendors anymore. They were one-of-a-kind vendors. So it would be a monumental task to bring one back and to fly.